environmental disaster, and the chemtrails are the only thing that is uh, holding everything together. A group of geoengineers, a clique, essentially a small clique, has decided that the answer to our global warming problems are to release particles and chemicals into the atmosphere. David Keith, Ken Caldera, and a small group of these men affiliated with various universities have promoted this for a long time. They have been able to keep any voices that would be in opposition to them or want to know about the impacts off the record. In other words, that they have become the experts to go to and that the public and other people have no say. In 2018, scientists will take bold steps to explore a technology that could reverse the effects of climate change. It's an engineering project that would literally touch every living thing on the planet. They're looking at ways to reflect sunlight back into space. So if I made a decision, or if there was a collective decision, to do a geoengineering program, and you put, say, uh, the kind of program I think we're going to put about a million tons a year in them, let's say, you might end up killing many tens of thousands of people a year as a direct result of that decision. Geoengineering is the pioneer in science of thousands of that people could well be on everyone's lips in 2018. The idea of geoengineering is the idea that humans purposefully influence the climate intervention. Of the planet. Solar geoengineering specifically is the idea of introducing a substance into the stratosphere that will Aluminum cool down the planet Strontium by reflecting coal back ash. Sulfur. If we turn down the sun a little bit, that brings the Earth's energy more into balance, and that could reduce some of the risks like extreme storms or extreme temperatures. Exactly. So, we, so the other thing is horrifying, is that you could actually spray sulfuric acid in the stratosphere, 20 kilometers over our head, and use that to stop the planet warming up. And it's okay, kind of ugly tech fix. You could you can spray something into the atmosphere to yeah. change, okay, spray okay. pollution into the atmosphere to stop it warming. I made a decision, or there was a collective decision, to do a geoengineering program. Aluminum. And you put, say, uh, the kind of program I think makes more sense is what about a million tons a year in business. A million tons of you aluminum dust per year. Tens of of a year. So killing many of tens decision. of thousands of people per year. We don't know what the side effects will be. We don't know how much we're gonna, we would need to spray. Yeah. There's really no solid evidence that it, it will work. Now, if you take a two-mile walk on a cold day, and you can turn around, and you can see your condensation trail tracking all the way back for two miles, that's how crazy it is to think that what we're looking in the sky is actually condensation trail. The exact same thing happens with jet engines. Uh, and when that exhaust hits the cold air, it condenses, it freezes, it makes a cloud. Contrails are essentially clouds. They're exactly the same physically as a regular cirrus cloud. The contrails, not the chemical, the contrails occur because of cold air, minus 30. It takes a high altitude, around 30,000 feet plus. There's a carbon dioxide and water vapor in that exhaust that turns to ice crystals and that's what you see the white stream behind it those white crystals I of never ice see them warm up except dissolve when the jets and the are smoke spraying. goes away and it never lasts more than a minute what we're seeing now and i first could not believe it and i started looking at the skies I see and these turn are not off normal and they're not natural there's something going on. I don't Flying know who it is or why they're doing the city. it. All I can testify Turning is it's off not and natural on. and it's not normal. It's got to be some outside influence doing that. Na NASA actually has a contrail forecasting site, right. which isn't, isn't really for pilots anything? or anything. It's just part of their contrail research. Chemtrails, they're not contrails, are indeed real. They're spraying almost every day. I watch the clouds and watch the spraying program going on. I want to tell you that we're in very great danger uh, from the pollution that's coming down over us. And we've been led astray by the military-industrial complex, and they're responsible for the clouds' creation and weather manipulation programs. They're dark operations. That's why they're not out in the media. There's no reason to do it. There's no benefit whatsoever. There's no scientific evidence mm -hmm. that's ever uncovered, ever, that there's any benefit for anybody of spraying aluminum over people. You know, when we stop doing it, we'll the world bounce back in a terrible way and it'll be a big disaster. The experiments can give you colorful auroras, which they talk about as being wonderful. Many times, people think that the auroras are normal. NASA launching this rocket, which could create 
an aurora-esque looking scene in our skies across the Delaware Valley. That orange shaded area, that is a visibility zone, so we're all in it. It could create colorful, luminescent clouds because of vapor released by this rocket. The reason I am concerned for agriculture is that none of these experiments have any public oversight nor agricultural oversight. Our drinking water is impacted because the chemicals are now beginning to show up in our drinking water. In California, the State Department of Health drinking water tests were examined between 1970 and this year, and we found unusual spiking in barium, aluminum, strontium, magnesium, calcium, manganese, and all of these spikes at the same time. I look around and I see people are starting to look up and see this. Many times I've spoken about chemtrails, and I get this blank look on my face. What are you talking about? I'm saying, look up. As a pilot, but before I fly, I look up. And so, boy, they're really out there working. Data from California EPA confirming aluminum contamination in waterways throughout California. This is from Cal EPA. There's about 26 lab tests in here confirming that there is aluminum, barium, strontium in our air, what we're all breathing here, we're all exposed to. We face a lot of legitimate challenges here. I agree with you. I agree with uh, a lot of points brought up, but I would ask anybody in the room, what challenges will we face if we're inhaling aluminum on a day-in, day-out basis? If our streams are contaminated with aluminum, how can we prepare when our soils no longer grow properly, when we have a UV issue that's off the charts? So when we have Cal EPA stating that this is not in their jurisdiction, these climate modification programs that are absolutely going on, we have CARB saying not in their jurisdiction, Shasta County saying not in their jurisdiction, um, I would like to ask, since we know maybe these programs... Maybe, are, maybe the federal EPA, because they're trying to take over every mud puddle and ditch and backyard pond in the it. world, so part of maybe it. somebody will find it. Right? It is part of it. Water rights are being pursued, and we know the drought is a 2 plus 2 equals 4 equation. We have the, the, the satellite imagery to prove it up. So I'm going to hand this data off to you. I have a copy for you and for your staff. My question would be this. Since nobody, everybody is passing the buck here, will your office address the fact that we have an absolute positively like a heavy metal contamination issue that cannot be disputed, it's a public health hazard. We have a, a UV radiation issue that's so intense it's burning the bark off of trees. All appear to be related to these pro climate modification programs, but these issues are indisputable public health hazards. Since nobody else will address it, will your office address it? Biosphere and the climate system, which is the bottom line, as I've stated over and over and over. No habitat, no humans, very simple. All other considerations are subordinate to the priority of preserving the planet's life support systems. All other considerations are a distraction in comparison. The climate engineers continue to systematically tear apart Earth's climate and life support processes. As overall, global temperatures continue to skyrocket, strategically engineered cooldowns using patented chemical ice nucleation processes are used to confuse and divide the population in regard to the true extent of climate disintegration and the immense threat it poses. The U.S. West and many other parts of the world continue to bake under record high temperatures. Skies continue to be constantly contaminated with the climate engineering jet aircraft sprayed aerosol particle dispersions, all of which we get to inhale, by the way. Does anyone even stop to wonder what happened to blue skies? The climate engineers continue to completely cut off the flow of moisture to the U.S. West and countless other parts of the world, they, the climate engineers, decide where it rains, where it does not, and how toxic that rain will be. On that note, for those that live in the Shasta County, Reading area, or for that matter, countless places across the country and around the world, does anyone even notice that there are trees all over the city, not all trees, but many trees, that are fully foliated with stone dead leaves. And those leaves will hang there until new leaves come out in the spring. This is absolutely, completely and totally unnatural. What's causing these leaves to die and hang on the trees? And it appears that in specific rains in the fall, because the temperatures are not getting cold enough, in fact, where I live, have not had a below freezing temperature. On my area, 2,000 foot elevation on the east side of Lake Shasta, I have not had a single below freezing temperature here all winter long. You used to get them in October, not one. The leaves on my trees here are also hanging dead on the tree. This is not a result of the abscission hormone releasing the leaf from the tree because it's cold. 
something else is going on, and it appears in the last seven plus years that at a particular rain in the fall, some sort of defoliant is being used in the mix to force the trees into dormancy. Why would they do this? Because it creates the illusion of winter for people who are not that observant, for people who forgot. Leaves used to fall whole from the tree in the fall, discolored but whole, and the trees would certainly be bare all winter, not foliated with stone dead leaves, as you can find all over Reading, all over other locations across the country and across the world. We are trying to, with some samples we have, have testing done to find out what's in the mix in these fall rains. If it's some sort of dioxin, Agent Orange, for example, for people who don't think this can be done.